Kate, uh, you are a menopause mentor, a workshop facilitator, and the host of a podcast called uh, Life, an Inside Job. You've been therapist for nearly 30 years as well, and you're on a mission to change the way we regard menopause and show how we can relax into our own inner authority through our cyclical nature and menopause process. And very exciting, you've got a book coming out soon in February. It's called Second Spring, The Guide to Self-Care for Menopause. Can't wait to read it. Mm, the book twins. Yes, pretty much, pretty much. <laughs> uh, so tonight we're going to discuss from menopause to postmenopause. Can we start with uh, telling us a bit about your background? Yeah, sure. I've been really blessed because right from when I started back in the 1990s, I've had teachers who have innately trusted the body's capacity to heal. So this sort of inner cyclical buoyancy that we naturally have. Mm -hmm. And that, that has been taught to me and passed down by me. My first teacher was Gerda Boyson, who taught the biodynamic method. And many of the her, of what she taught back in the, in the 50s and 60s and 70s, all the way through to the 90s, is now mainstream. And this, this sort of theme of the body's capacity to heal has been really carried down through all my training. So through the pregnancy training that I did with Suzanne Yates, I worked as a body worker for a long time and then got more into women's health with the abdominal massage mm -hmm. so with Claire Spink and Helen Petch um, and really got into how if we can hold the right space as therapists, if we can hold the right space and as, as people, when we can find the right environment, our difficulties naturally unravel. You know, we always feel that we have to go out uh, find an expert to fix us and we the, you know the answer is out there mm. but when we can it's absolutely within exactly that and we need to find the right environment and clear the way and I think this is very true of menopause and th this this theme has really continued my training at Red School and that with Alexandra Pope and Shani Hugo Wurlitzer and I'd really like to credit them with the inspiration for my book because it's their work that I'm moving on into a more accessible sphere with the seasons and the medicine circle or not all this kind of thing. Mm. Yeah, so it's all non-prescriptive. It's very countercultural because it's it's all about less giving it back to yourself and creating this sort of softer, quieter environment. In the mentoring you do, I saw that you're using yoga nigra and medicine circle, which you've just yeah. mentioned. It's yeah. two concepts that I'm absolutely not familiar with. Do you mind sharing oh, a bit about what it is? You have such a joy coming your way. Yes, because I'm I'm going to learn a lot. Of, I mean, obviously, I read yeah. you know what, how you explained it but our listener would, would also benefit for from yeah. you explaining what it is yeah sure i'd love to the yoga nidra is a kind of um guided meditation so what happens is i drop into the the needs of the clients say and then we build that into a guided meditation so that they can take it away and listen to it and their unconscious does the work while they rest mm. i mean it's it's just bliss it works on a, a, a particular sequence of events of ways of communicating Communicating to the subconscious that it's safe. This is a, this is a guided meditation of mm. a very particular kind. And the medicine circles are uh, again. Actually, can I tell you about the seasons first? Because yes. then you'll yes. then you'll get then you'll get what the medicine circles are about. Yeah. My book offers this psychological map for menopause for life and it's born out of the seasons of menstruality so that means the seasons of the menstrual cycle it's just like the annual seasons in the in spring and summer were more expansive we go outwards and in the autumn and winter we come inwards and we're more quiet in spring and summer we're more interested in connecting with the world and being seen you know we're more egoic and more mm. robust. We're better at meeting other people's needs. <laughs> okay, so does it mean that each year we've got four seasons? Each woman has four seasons. Each menstrual cycle. So each let's, menstrual let's, cycle. Let's take it in the, to the to the menstrual seasons. Okay. So after after you finish bleeding you would feel maybe a bit playful mm -hmm. and a bit exploratory. And then you come more into the uh, summer, which is the uh, ovulation, where you're much more kind of multitasking, much more kind of interested in connecting and intimacy and, and that kind of thing. And then coming into the autumn in the, in the premenstrual phase, the, you know, classically, there's a lot of anger and rage. But what is happening is that we are remembering our own needs. You know, this is when we go, mm. Huh? What? <laughs> what the hell? What is happening here? And it gets a very bad rap yeah. because in our culture, it's not 
particularly acceptable for women to have needs or put our needs first. So this, this becomes the, often this crunch point. But once you, once you understand about an autumn truth, it mm. becomes much more possible to accept our feelings and much more possible to allow the challenging stuff that comes up. And the winter would be the, the uh, period, the, the, bleed, the bleed time, which is much more inward and about rest and dreaminess. So you have this kind of expansive and contraction thing going on and this this travels then into the seasons of life so if you take the time from your your menop from your first period that would be spring so your i don't know what your spring was like but mine mine was pretty pretty ridiculous so i was sort of running around falling on my face getting into unsuitable situations running home crying <laughs> You know, it has all that quality of newness and expan expansion mm. and exploring out in the world. And the summit, the summer years are really akin to ovulation in that we say in our 30s, career becomes really important. We, you know, we get that, we start to feel that that glass ceiling pressing against our heads. And we feel that really, that really strong impulse to be seen, to have our talents witnessed in the world. And even if you are prevented from doing that for some reason through uh, trauma or ill health or or life circumstances or whatever we feel that push we feel the push to um, to manifest our our gifts in the world and then perimenopause comes knocking and we it's an autumnal time so just like the premenstrual we start to feel the truth about ourselves mm. and all the things that aren't working and we start to feel those feelings what people experience as i'm falling apart i'm not myself it's a catastrophe it's a coming home to yourself it's a it's a sort of a time of reflection and reckoning with what you have done with yourself and what has happened to you in the previous 20 years so if you have been running around like a lunatic, serving everybody else's needs and forgetting that you have a body and forgetting your own needs, it's going to hurt. Yeah. And this, this, is, this is why we have the problem. But once you understand that, oh, okay, this is a time when there is going to be more sensitivity. There's going to be more attention to what I really need. And once we're able to accept that, then this whole massive rain cloud of shame, of judgment, of fear can just dissipate because it's this part of this natural expansion and contraction and then when we come into the more winter of, of menopause that's much more when we start to accept what is happening now it doesn't mean that everything is fixed and wonderful and la -la -la, we're all happy it's much more it's the difference between say i hate my body i hate my body i hate I hate this, what's happening to me. It's really awful to changing more to, I wonder what I could use right now to really soothe myself. How could I really hold myself in this difficult place? So we start to develop a more loving relationship with ourselves, and, which I'll talk about more later, rest. And again, the difficulty happens when in our culture, A, we don't expect this, you know, nobody told us. <laughs> nobody told us this was going to happen. We're not allowed to rest. We don't allow ourselves to rest because we feel covered in guilt and shame because we're, we're getting it wrong. It's a failure, it, you know, all this stuff because we're so focused on productivity. Do you think women take the time to do the work during the winter season? No. No, but they should. <laughs> Short answer. Then we start a whole new cycle. So that's why the, my book is called Second Spring, because then we come mm. into a second spring and yes. post menopause. And it has a lot of the qualities of the first one. So it will have a lot of exploration. If you think about that spring sunshine, you know, it's kind of like mid March. Yeah. And you wake up one morning and you, you kind of crack an eye and you look out the window and it's, oh, there's a different quality to the light. And you start yes. to see the buds starting to swell and it's kind it has that quality of interest in the world like in the winter of menopause mm. women don't care <laughs> what is going on out there they just don't want to know but in spring it starts to be interesting and i have to say i know that in some circles people say oh you know post menopause it's all full of grrr, and everything's wonderful and you become this wise blah 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 all that kind of thing I think that's possible but it also comes with a great deal of vulnerability because you're in the new cycle mm. so what I see with my um my peers because I'm in I'm in second spring I'm 56 and I I can't even remember when I last had a period but I I think it was something like 2015 2016 something like that so I'm kind of I'm kind of in there and it takes a lot of sort of, it's like being a teenager. I'm running down the wrong road and falling on my face and making an idiot out of myself, you know, going into, 
oh, I should have got it sorted. I don't know where I am now and who am I? And, you know, it's not that everything is, is rosy and sorted and then you know who you are. Do you think during this time of postmenopause or second, second spring, there is another season, like four season? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Look at women in their 60s. They are, you know, Blooming. they're not on Instagram. I wonder why. It's because they have a life. It's because they're out learning pottery and painting and climbing up mountains and having unsuitable sex and discovering so? and discovering new things in the world because they are in the second summer. Oh, so there are cycles within our menses, yeah. cycle within our life, and then yeah. there is cycle within uh, postmenopause, so second spring. So how would you define second spring? The decade after, you know, you reach menopause or do you have something How would more... I define it? Yeah. It's like all the seasons, you feel it. It's very distinct, this difference between I just really want to stay home under my blanket to, oh, oh I always wanted to be a dancer or I always wanted to have red shoes. Because mm. <laughs> there's nothing like red shoes, right? So would you say you get into the the second spring right after menopause or there is a lag i mean obviously you you just said that you know you can feel entering the uh -huh. second spring but in terms for all the women who are really struggling with symptoms and just mm -hmm. think you know there is no way out when would you say you get into this phase where you feel so good about yourself and you want to explore the world and you have no pressure from the outside it's all about you okay. and how you feel i would say that will arrive when you have developed a kind relationship with yourself and allowed yourself enough rest and space. So it's totally unrelated to the symptoms. It's about you yeah, and what's happening inside exactly. of you. Exactly. It's a psychological place. Mm. But it is very linked with the symptoms because at the point where you can really soften into your relationship with yourself mm. and really allow yourself to be vulnerable i mean that that's another aspect of second spring this enormous vulnerability that comes from the people i look at in second spring that's a characteristic that we are both in our power like very relaxed in how we are mm. comfortable in our skin but also really okay with vulnerability like messing up doesn't matter so much anymore and now can you explain about medicine circle, so now I can, circle? Yeah. Or, or, or do you think we should talk about the book first and then the medicine no, let's circle talk about the medicine circles. okay the medicine circles are a guided practice where you get into the seasons so these can be the seasons of your life or the seasons of your um, menstrual cycle if you're still menstruating and it's energy medicine so you we guide you into the center of the seasons with mm. a question so it might be how can I take care of myself now or how can I relieve this suffering of whatever symptom or whatever and then you move through the seasons so you will be feeling you will be maybe people visualize or they feel sensation in their body or stories come to mind or helpers or mythical creatures so we're we're working in the land of uh, embodied symbolism so you feel it in your body but mm. also there is a strong symbolic component either in the uh, natural landscape because we're moving through seasons so that that often arises and the effect of this is to bring the medicine, hence medicine circles, for for the uh, for whatever the question is. This is the most powerful and most importantly safe practice that I've ever found. I would say it's it's more suitable for, for people who are quite sensitive. Yeah, let's talk about your book now. Uh, uh, the self care guide for menopause. The medicine circle is right in the center of it, and there's an audio of it, so people can access this wherever they are. It gives you lots of tips, practices, and self care so that you can have a soul experience and land in a vibrant second spring if you have pushed yourself and pushed and pushed and pushed all through mm. your life to perform to be good enough you know what kind of second spring do you think you're going to have on what sort of resources you know this is this is this is the pointy finger of kate yes yes yeah, what do you want about... how do you want your old age to be yeah it's about recovering because the body will you know say no more and that's it and yeah there's a reality that bodies become yeah. more frail as we age exactly so greater care is required the, you don't need fixing okay. you're not a bungalow in need of repair <laughs> the different the problem that we have with perimenopause and menopause is mostly i can't do it this on the little screen it's out there it's to do with our environment with the toxicity around aging mm. and the shame and judgment we feel about that yeah. and all kinds of other toxicity the misogyny the misogynistic culture mm -hmm. that we live in and the toxicity from our food which of course you yeah. you know about and the toxicity from our environment societies that that are better with aging their menopause mm -hmm. symptoms 
for better. There are often friendships that end in menopause because sort of uh, capacity to see this discernment that arises, mm. that we can see what nourishes us and what does not, quite often means that we don't want to be around toxic friends anymore. Yeah, it's a new beginning. Yeah, the people that make you feel bad. We can control our immediate environment and that mm, involves like... saying no mostly. Yeah, and I like the fact that menopause happen in what we call midlife, so that although technically we might only have like 30 years post-menopause, it still seems like, you know, we've had half our life before and now we've got still another half. And I think it's a better half because we know so much more about life and, and what we can do. My next question is about your book. Obviously, you know, it's, it would be a very good book to have, but when do you think is the best time to buy it and read it? Buy it any t- anywhere, but <laughs> when do you think is going to be the best time to read it? I think in real life, people will buy people will buy it when they're in pain. I think actually the best time to read it is is in your late thirties. So people are aware and know that as they become more sensitive, that they can take care of themselves and not feel like they've been uh, that, that they're becoming ill. Understanding the seasons is like mm. an instant fix into your self care. Since you're postmenopausal, do you want to share some? Some tip about how you went through menopause and things that helped you that might help our listeners? Mm, Sure, yeah. I was reflecting on this the other day. When I was perimenopausal, I was also working with women's cycles, so I I knew what to expect. And I thought I had it sorted. It's like, I know this stuff. I have to let go. I've let go of this. I've let go of that. I'm so good at resting, you know. So my my day looked like, um, you know, get up, meditate, eat some food, do some yoga, go to work, get the kids. <laughs> Believe, amazingly, I had get, let go of a lot of stuff. I, I'd let go of two major projects that um, at that point, don't know how I used to do it all. But nevertheless, my body was going, because one of the things about menopause is that yeah. you say, I'm rest, come on menopause, I'm resting. I'm doing it right. Come on, not more. And she always says, yeah, more. So you did get symptom after all. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. So I, the thing that I suffered most from was sleep issues. So I wasn't really sleeping, but I wasn't really helping that, you know, the, the kind of clients mm. who wanted their shoulders fixing, which is hard work. Yeah. And I was working with the clients who uh, wanted to really access themselves and work with in a somatic emotional way with, with body work. So I was, you know, I was like, yeah, okay. It's like classic summer. I'm here. <laughs> here I am. I'm doing living the dream. And then my, my hands were swelling up. And I realized that if I continued in this way, that I would not be able to do the things that I long to in my second spring. So my, my thoughts to myself were, if you continue like this, like pursuing this kind of this idea of you as the, the therapist person, the helpful person, the person who fixes people and the person who, you know, who... Mm who has that kind of status within my um, community, then you won't be able to do what you really want to do. And after a lot of journaling and therapy and stuff, uh, I realized I had to stop. And I, I, you know, I was like, I'm trying to figure it out. And that's, this is the classic autumnal perimenopausal. I have to work it out. But it's like, you can't figure it out. It's not a cerebral process. Mm. The process of surrender and letting go. So what I did was to just stop completely. So you stopped working and that, I stopped working. that uh, was sufficient. And it was, it was possible because my partner, he works, he was working uh, contracts at the time and he had, he, he had got a new contract and meant that the bills were paid. It was a mm. position of privilege that I was able to do this. And I had some rules in my, so it was a menopause gap, essentially, like, a, like kids, well, they don't, they don't so much now, but in the old days, you know, they would take a gap year. Mm. And so this was a menopause gap and the rules were that to have no goals, to ditch anything that was goal orientated, to only do things that were fun, what else, to have, to rest as much as I wanted to or needed to, um, and not think about any, anything to do with work until the end of it. And what happened was the spaciousness. So it was to do with giving myself space, like cutting out all the, the worry, cutting out all the client holding, the mental and emotional mm. client holding that I was doing. And this kind of wellspring of creativity came up and I started to draw and paint. And so and interestingly, a lot of the stuff that I used to do as, as, as a teenager and had forgotten. 
make my own clothes and to stitch and to draw and to just mess around without aim not to create a thing or to you know to make an exhibition but just just, just because just, it was interesting to see yeah, and fun. Oh, where does this go to you know with swelling joints and insomnia i would have been a classic for hrt mm -hmm. you know and he probably would have fixed it after a bit of tweaking but if i had taken hrt at that point i would still be doing body work and I would never have written this book. So my creativity is more alive now. And with the podcast, I have these astonishing, I mean, like astonishing, like, I, I met my, hit, my, my heroine, but like, <laughs> and she agreed to have, conversa have, have a conversation with me for the podcast. Uh, it was a six month gap. And within the six months, all your symptoms disappeared, or pretty much? Well, it's telling because I can't remember. Okay. Because it wasn't important anymore. Sleep is still an issue. It comes and it goes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I don't define myself by how well I slept the night before. That's a great tip. If, you, if there's only one thing that you do when you're in menopause or perimenopause is to try and create more space. And inevitably, that means saying no to some stuff. And you already know what you mm. need to say no to. <laughs> Yeah. because that's the stuff that is really true you know exactly if you can't get rid of it entirely can you create more mental softness around it or make it a quarter of an hour shorter and then you can think more clearly about how you want to proceed and how you want to make change i understand you offer some free resources yes. for the people who'd be interested in in trying out uh yoga nidra and yeah. can you tell us what's available on your website you've got so, so much. no i can't there's so much i know <laughs> there's so I much know. i can't remember i can't remember there's lots of yoga nidra so if you are a little fatigued and you'd like a rest then you can do download those i know what's really helpful there are images of of the seasons of life so you can download one of those and print them and stick it on your fridge and then you say to your family look that is why i am so angry <laughs> point to autumn and tell them about that and it really helps to orientate yourself as to where you are every day and there's loads of other stuff yes. my website is katecodrington.co.uk and you can sign them all there okay great and it's the best way to contact you on instagram where i'm kate underscore codrington very last question who do you think i should interview next Ooh, um Sophie you... Fletcher because she is known as Mindful Menopause and she's written a book of the same name and she is a very good egg, has shed loads of practical tips okay. on managing mental health in menopause. Anything else you would like to add before we finishing the session? Oh, just to say thank you for this wonderful conversation. It's such a pleasure to come and right. share the seasonal vibe. Just remind people that you're okay and you don't need fixing. Thank you so much, Kate, for this conversation.